Okay then. I'm ready ish. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. As you may be able to tell, I am not Yoss. Um, just before Yoss speaks, um, I wanted to give him just a, a short introduction because he's far too modest to introduce himself. <coughs> um, for those of you who don't know, um, Yoss has come to us today all the way from the Netherlands. He's um, quite famous throughout, uh, throughout Locksport and Lockpicking. Yoss is only second, second ever non German to ever be awarded Meister title, which, for those of you who don't know, that is the highest award you can get in um, competitive lockpicking. So uh, awarded by the um, German sport picking group SS Dev, who's, as I say, only the second ever non-German to get that, and Jos got that twice. He's also um, the two times Dutch impression champion, and the current reigning um, world record holder for impressioning. He's uh, very kindly agreed to uh, join us all here today, and I'm I'm sure that um, basically the man's a legend, and so I'm going to get down now and let him do the things he's legendary for. I'm uh, here to talk about impressioning, um, but first of all, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start. A, you do hear me, right? Yeah. First of all, we'll, we'll, we'll do a bit about locks, uh, how they work, why you can pick them, because the main reason why you can pick locks is basically the same reason why you can impression locks. Impressioning, <coughs> for people who don't know, is open a lock um, using no force, no. Not, 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 well, non-destructive force. You use a key that is uncut, so a blank key, so uh, a key like the one that's hanging at your local locksmith, and you file it to a working key without prior knowledge of what that actual key should look like. Um, but first, uh, we have to talk about locks in order to, well, uh, to see what we should open. I'm a member of Tool, the Open Organization of Lock Pickers, which uh, is uh, primarily based in the Netherlands, but we now have a uh, an American branch that's growing quite rapidly. And I'm also a member of the Hackerspace in Arnhem, which is awesome. This one. A lock! This is what we typically think a lock looks like, and heck, it does. It's a round bit that should turn. That's basically what it is. And in this configuration, it doesn't. Uh, because if you look closely, there's, there's something in the keyway that's preventing it, but probably preventing it for it. But, um, so we make a schematic out of this. Oh, might as well do that. <coughs> and again, a uh, round thing that you turn, and there's a bit of red that probably has something to do with it. So if we take off another layer, so we, we go in, um, we'll see it gets more interesting. So there's a red bit, but that red bit is actually not preventing the yellow bit to turn. That's the blue bit. And there's a spring underneath. And, well, it won't turn because there's the blue bit is preventing it from turning. If you push everything down, it opens. So this is an open lock. Well, this is a shite open lock because it only has one pin. Normally, it's a configuration of five, six, more, whatever pins. And they, well, you see five blue bits preventing it from turning. So in order to open this, we uh, have to put them all at the same level. We have a special tool for that, and it's called a key. Now all the, all the bits and pieces are in the correct position, and it can turn. If it's either too low or too high, it doesn't. Or the, uh, all the, the, the break between the two pins at one... Uh, I'm lost. Uh, it has to be at the same shear line. So like I said, if you try to turn it, there are five blue bits preventing it from turning. That's actually not totally correct. So here you see the, the five bits that's actually turning it. Because in the real world, stuff like this gets used. Um, you see the holes of the cylinder, in the actual cylinder, they are drilled, they are machined and they don't have to be in, in the exact same line. And the pins don't have to be exact the same thickness. Well, these are actually Korean pins and they're really crap, but you, you can see that they're, uh, that they're not the same. So, in essence, it's not five bits preventing it from turning, it's one bit that preventing it from turning first. So if you look at this lock, 
as not a, uh, a lock with five pin stacks, but as five locks with one pin stack, at this moment one is locked. The other ones are not even in play. So if you try to turn this, it won't, that one single lock, because, well, as the blue bit in a way, we keep on repeating ourselves. The fun part is, if you do put it on the correct level, this lock will turn ever so slightly until the next biggest or more to the left uh, pin stack is preventing it from turning. What also funny is, if it turns ever so slightly, the blue bit will get stuck behind the yellow bit and it won't fall back. Ideally. So that enables us to do the following. If we turn the cylinder, there's one thing that's uh, uh, not on the correct level and, and being the fattest. If you start feeling about, you feel this is just spring tension. There's nothing more. Well, and gravity, but I mean, the stuff is tiny. The one that's actually not want to move down because it's pushed to the side, that's the one you need to attack. So if you push that one down to the correct level, with any luck, it'll stay there. And so this is picking. This is what we're doing at the, at the lock picking uh, uh, hackerspace uh, and, and uh, at, at the tent over there. And it's brilliant. Open. Very good. Yell open. It's part of the program. <laughs> so, that, uh, so that's it. That's lock picking. And of course, there's cheating also. I mean, if you um, don't want to fiddle about but guesstimate it more likely, I mean, this might work. Most on crappy locks, because and, and lots of locks are crappy. And also on good locks, uh, you probably will set a few pins, not all of them. So if you start off with this raking technique and then go on with the actual pick, you can, uh, well, you can open it then. So um, you need <coughs> tools for that. They can be bought, they can be bought on site. Um, simple stuff. So, of course, you should demo this. Which is actually never a good idea because this goes wrong. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's open. Okay, so that works. <coughs> and if we jiggle it a bit, it's open a bit faster. So that's that's the idea because this is a crap lock, but it's good to abuse. <coughs> this technique works with pins. Work with any lock that has pins. So even if they're differently configured or coming in from different angles. Just pins, nothing fancy. In rooms like this, computer rooms for people who don't know, um, different locks are used. These are uh, wafers, they work differently. Instead of pins, um, they're wafers. And the way they work is um, the, the, the right bit in the middle, that's the keyhole, so, uh, and the red thing, there's no blue thing anymore. That's preventing it from turning now because it's too low. And this should move, yeah. Now because it's too low, now because it's too high. And if it's dead smack in the middle, it'll open. These things want to be opened. You can stick basically anything in there and they'll pop open. So we can use regular lock picking tools if you want to look professional. But actually a popsicle stick has a good chance for... <laughs> I didn't bring any. <laughs> or popsicles but uh, yeah you, you can buy jigglers for that precise reason uh, th these are jigglers basically a raking tool but well some shops need to sell stuff so they, they uh, put that in it's it's basically a, a popsicle stick on steroids right okay mr. Newton and billiard balls what the hell is he going on about you're technically savvy what happens if a white ball will hit uh, this cluster of other balls anyone <laughs> Yo. Uh, the red ball will stay where it is, the blue ball will fire away. That's correct. Proof. Ta -da. <laughs> we love our graphics, don't we? Graphics are not by me, uh, they're all by, done by uh, an American bloke called Devian, and we love him to death for it. Uh, the colors in that animation before was, of course, not by chance. There's red and blue bits. So if this is your white billiard ball, that's the red one, that's the blue one. The red will stay in place, ish, the blues will pop off. Um, so again, abusing the same lock, putting a piece of metal in, open. Now this is not that skillful. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have this on your front door, oh, you have other problems. But um, yeah, 
of course, don't do it again. Yes, there you go. But that takes way too long, of course. So they made one on batteries. Because, <laughs> well, anything is better with batteries in it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> batteries are almost dead. Now, believe me for it, this is supposed to be easier. I never ever use this thing just on demos and I always fuck up. But of course, it's a big piece of metal with batteries. Explain that to Mr. Customs. <laughs> and this looks like a gun, <laughs> especially on an x-ray. <laughs> That's going to be a problem. So what if we can stick something else in this lock that's going to touch all the pins. Oh wait, there's a key for that, right? If you take the original key, or at least a key that fits, and file it down to the lowest position possible, it'll still hit all the pins, right? Um, and if you then take a piece of the shoulder, which is the part that's preventing it to go in deeper, then it can move a bit resulting in this situation. So it can move a bit, move a bit, but it's just barely touching the pins. But if we now whack that key, with any luck, this takes a while, it's supposed to start. If we whack that key quite hard, then it's a billiard ball. And if we turn it at the right moment, it'll open. See? <laughs> now, this is not the working key, I guarantee you. It's just a matter of timing and, I mean, it takes some skill to do this. We did a, a consumer report three years ago, four? Oh, uh, five, six years, I think, actually. Uh, well, quite some time ago when we were young and innocent. Um, <coughs> we bought 90-something of the most popular cylinders in the Netherlands and made bump keys out of them. That's basically when the whole bump key craze started. Some people claim to patent this stuff, but well, <laughs> ignore that. <laughs> Cut that out. But, um, um, well, when we did that, um, well, we, about 90% at least, we, we opened by this one. Actually, we were more than 98, something like that. It was scary. But then they were like, well, yeah, you guys are almost professionals. So then the second test was, we went up to a novice who never ever lockpicked again, just regular broke off the street. Show this, this is how you do it. Give it to them and wait for one minute. If he could open it without prior knowledge in one minute, we consider that lock to be not safe to this particular attack. 90% failed the locks, not the volunteers. <laughs> Scary. So we thought, well, th this is not good. I mean, picking... Um, Picking requires skill, well not in these locks, but uh, normally that requires skill. This doesn't. The bad guys know this already, so we were like, let's educate the, the, the people so they know they have crap locks. Because, I mean, if you have this brand on your front door, and I show you this, I would be scared, wouldn't you? Because all you need is a key that fits in the lock. Meaning, if you live in a flat, that's every neighbor, because their key will fit in your lock. And the other way around, but I'm not suggesting anything. But um, if you file that down, that's the key to the kingdom. If you live in a uh, newly built housing complex, and uh, not a flat, but a whole neighborhood, and they're built at the same time, they probably have the same brand of lock. So I don't care what you have on your door. If it was on your door when you bought the house or started renting it, change it. Yo. Yeah. Same brand or same combo? Because <laughs> no one would ever burglar their neighbors, but their neighbor's neighbor. <laughs> Even then, it doesn't work. But if you, yeah, oh, that's scary. Oh, it's handy to be a locksmith in that area. <laughs> Number how much? There you go. <laughs> Eight quid, please. <laughs> and you're all three. Just try out. 
yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Wiggle set for that neighborhood. Because um, then you know what the luck of your neighbors look like. And actually looking at it gives you quite some information. I mean, I'm not saying the code correctly, but maybe it is. This is a big ass camera and a tiny little lens, or the other way around. Um, it's quite big. So what it can do is, if you see, where is that? I hit a pointer anyway. There you go. There is a table. On the table is a book, on the table are keys. If you have a proper lens, you can zoom in and see the keys. Of course, you can scale that down and just look at it while walking past the table, but you get the idea. You can see the keys um, and take pictures of it. These are actually American quick sets. I know that because it has a particular shape, which is helpful because that shape is always the same. This part, not that part. Uh, well, except if you live in, the, in his neighborhood. Then <laughs> Um, <coughs> so what you can do, if you have that picture, put the known marking places in it and scratch and tilt and do whatever for it until you have a correct aligned key. Then you can decode it and cut it. So looking at a key, having visual contact with a key could be enough for a competent attacker to compromise the whole system. That's a problem. <coughs> Proof. <coughs> a couple of years ago in the Netherlands we had a camp similar to this called Haar and there were some Germans there and the Germans they love their locks um, they had a working key to police handcuffs to German police handcuffs and then Ray that's our uh, th th this is a German guy who is our handcuff god basically you should see his collection it's scary um, he went to a police officer a Dutch one and said that's a lips uh, right can I try my key on your handcuff? Please, 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 please. And he said, fuck off and turn his back. <laughs> and then Ray snapped this picture. <laughs> so we could visually see this. And if you zoom into it, you could see, yep, yeah, same key. So he had the actual key, but just for the heck of it, we printed it in 3D to scare the shit of them. <laughs> and that's a working key. <laughs> and it doesn't show up on radar. It's brilliant. We like it. Curve. No, it doesn't. So you can swallow it, do other stuff with it, or put it at, I don't know where, <laughs> Irish, I think. But um, yeah, you can. It, so that, that, that kind of scared them. Here we see the typical clean, clean desk policy desk in an office. And what do we see? Well, I see a key. And we put a coin uh, right beside it just to, well, have some reference. Take a picture of it. Print that picture. Print that picture. Put some metal foil behind it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Stay within the lines, cut it out, yank it in, turn it, open door. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, that's a crap lock. But on these cabinets, heck, they're all crap, right? They're all crap. This works, not always. Uh, you have to be very neatly, maybe ask a toddler to do it for you. But uh, yeah, that works. Scary. Okay. Now to what I consider to be the fun part. Impressioning. Like I said, it's building a key, a working key from a non-working key, being blank. Um, this is actually not new. Well, the w within the locksmith community, well, in, in within the sports uh, uh, community, this is kind of new-ish. I mean, we've been doing it for, what, five years, four, four, five in competition? That's about it. And a bit longer, I reckon. But in, in the real world, it has been used longer. This is, well, it used to be the oldest reference I could find, but they're, they're, they're way older than this one. But th this is uh, Mr. Tickle, who was the FBI go-to guy if they wanted to get into a door without the actual owner knowing it. And that's what he did. He died this year, never met him, uh, too bad, but he, he was good. One of the stories was that he had himself delivered to the perp's address in a cardboard box huge and it's very good and they just put the cardboard box besides the door that had to be opened there was a tiny hole in it and he did his thing quite quite cool have have the locksmith delivered pre-packaged it's cool that's what he did there's actually a book on impressioning 
uh, that's the book that basically got it all rolling. Um, it's uh, written by Oliver Dietrichsen, Oli for short, and well, he so he literally wrote the book on it, and he knows his stuff. He's a master also, and he knows this. There's pretty pictures in his book, so you can see everything that's going on, and you see it, it also works on dimple locks. And there's even uh, pictures from the Criminal Technische Prüflabor. That's a CSI in German, basically. And, well, now you don't know what you're looking at, but that'll change, hopefully. Because um, the question is, how long can I stand in front of any door that you rely on without being questioned, arrested, or clubbed down, or whatever? Is that two seconds? A week. That would be brutal. <laughs> a week, then you have other problems. <laughs> can I stand there for one minute? Ten? Ten is, I think that's a bit long. But two seconds, that, that's probably not a problem, right? But if I do it twice a day for two seconds, for a week or two, would that be a problem? Would that be noticed? Because that's the problem we're up against with impressioning. Case in point. Um, we put in a blank key, a non-cut key. So of course this does not turn the lock. But it can turn it a bit, just a tiny angle. If we turn this, same as in lock picking, we had before there's one pin stack that's preventing it to turn first one first so again not one lock with five pin stacks five locks with one pin stack that one is preventing it from turning the other ones are not even in play but of course now there's a key in there so if I turn it the other way with some luck luck not lock with some luck um, there's another key stack preventing it from turning it the other way so you have two that are preventing it so what we can do so that's the one. If we turn it to the left and wiggle it up and down a bit, then on position one, on position one, because we always count from the shoulder, on position one, that pin is just being pressed down by gravity and a spring. And that spring is not that strong. On that position, it's also doing nothing now. Well, it will be now. So if I put that up and down, that pin doesn't want to go up because it's squished to the side. Um, if I do this with quite some force, that one, then you will see, if you look closely, you will see markings where those pins did not want to go down. So you know for a fact that at that position you're at the wrong height. So you, and it looks, well, not that brilliant, but I mean, uh, I'll, I'll show you later hopefully. So at those positions where there's marks, you take a bit of material off. Rinse and repeat, because this is definitely not the right key again. So you do it again, and you wiggle it, and you turn it. So if you turn it, there will be a mark there. If you turn the other way, there will be a mark there after wiggle. And there will be marks within the, the, the values you just created. And, well, still hard to look. See. So there's marks in, in the values. Take more material off. Rinse and repeat. This could be a long talk, though. But what happened now, at this position, it's the correct height. So if you turn the key, it will turn ever so slightly, because this one was the first one preventing it from turning, and it's not anymore. That lock is open. Now you have four other locks to concern about. So if you turn it now, it won't mark here, because the, the pin is not pushed into the key, because it's quite soft material. With any lock, it'll start marking on another position. So if you keep on doing this, taking filing away your key step by step you'll end up with the working key and it'll probably look like crap but it'll work because if you look at this one the top one is the original one that we did not ha have hold of when we start filing the other one is filed well it looked like a shark took a bite of it because we don't want sharp valleys because marks are hard to see at that particular point so it, we, we make it rounded which is better for us but that works quite good actually and if you're any good at it, you win prizes. Um, now we're going to do this. Let's see. This works? Yep. I have a lock. I have a lock that I don't know the combination to. That's basically because I gave my lock that I knew the combination to to Darren and he had to get it back. <laughs> so it's going to be an actual demo. This is an Abus, which is 
a pretty good brand, especially for that price. But we've been practicing on Abus for a long, long time. So we know the spacings and we know the possible depths. So I don't know the exact space, well, the spacing of this lock, but I don't know the combination. We take a blank key. I put some scratches on it so I know where to file. And because this key is way fatter than it actually can be if you cut it. So a possible cut is lower than this. So I can take off material already because that will speed up. considerably I'll do uh, one lock full speed and then do it step by step and explain exactly what I'm doing if that's okay with you guys boom it's not Open. <laughs> so that's a working key. And it looks like crap, but it works. Over and over again. Uh, yeah. So if I, I can teach you lock picking, uh, you could probably open this lock. But then you leave and you come back and you have to pick it again. Now I have a tool I can give to anyone. You could open this, because you know how to operate a key. <laughs> so that's it. So that's, it. so that's a neat attack. Actually, why am I standing up? Okay, so now I'm going to do this again, and step for step, hopefully show it even on a microscope, what, what I'm looking at, so you know what I'm doing. Ooh. Take the blankie. You need, you need some force that you can't do ju just by hand, because that'll hurt. So we, we have grips. A vice grip uh, will we'll do also. But, I mean, we, we make it bigger and better and shiny. Shiny is always good. So, like I said, um, let's I sure hope this for you, Wolf. The blank key looks... Blanky looks something like that. That's not smooth. It's like a lunar surface. So what I do is use this tool. That this tool is a is a regular core that they removed all the pins out of and put very hard, nasty bits in it. What it does on the exact positions where the pins used to be. It makes dents. You see those on the side? So I know exactly where to start filing. Why I want that? Because <coughs> now it looks way different. It's smooth. You see? So any markings will be way easier to see 
on this surface than the surface we had before. So smoothing your key in any way, shape or form is useful. So I turn to the left, wiggle up and down, turn to the right, wiggle up and down. You can do that a couple of times, that's it. And then you look at it, <coughs> and you look for marks. They look like the, that one. You see? It's there. Sorry? Yeah, that's because I did a sloppy job, but it should be. And there's also one, also center. So once you start filing this and you know you're off center, you of course you force it a bit to the to, to the spot where it should be. But a big part of, of this is be neat. Yeah, know how to file, file consistency, wi wiggle consistent, do it consistent. So anything that shows up, you know the lock did that. Because if you start filing like that, you see weird markings, well that wasn't the lock, that was you. So being consistent helps. So you have to train a lot. It's open. Yeah. So put it in, rinse and repeat. Looking for these marks again. And so now they they show up at these at these values. They have a problem there, did they? So I take it one step down, someone there, someone there, someone there. So I've been at the log, <coughs> at this log, not that long. Well, I've been sitting here chatting, but the only thing I do is put it in, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, and I'm off. Or maybe a bit longer than two seconds. But if I'm wearing a, a delivery uniform and show up at a door, do something there and leave, people won't question me. I can do that more often. People won't question me. You're a fairly imposing guy. Most people question you. I'll, I'll hire you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. It looked. Uh, well, we. Uh. Come on. You got it? Take this off also. So it doesn't take that long. It takes some training. Uh, position four, there's some at the, at the top of your screen. Take that off. Number five. If anyone has any questions, just shoot. I mean, do you ever, do you ever use uh, blue to improve the contrast, or usually two? I know what. Do you use blue? You know, like ink to. Uh, oh yeah. Um, uh, the pictures that I showed uh, before, the top one was done with UV. I hate it because it messes up your lock. But I, I know people who do that. I mean, whatever floats your boat. I mean, but, but I, I don't like putting stuff in my lock except the pick or. A, a working key. Can I just add a bit to that? Yeah, sure. Um, the locks that the um, you have to use the mark quite clearly. So, where he's pressing, he needs nothing and he's very good. When I'm pressing stuff, I'm not very good. So, some UK locks, some in the hospital looking at yesterday, they will not mark like that at all. So, you do need some there to see the locks are, but not the locks that are very good. Or use different rocking techniques. Yeah. <coughs> uh, probably both. Yeah. How when you when you file are you going down the amount you know by experience? Yeah. Yes. In the real world, if you don't know your depth, you take baby steps, and then you have to do this more often. But uh, if you know the brand, and it's mostly printed on front of it, 
then you can see what the actual depths are and see if your filing, if your filing is deep enough. But yeah, I have muscle memories on these locks, so I know my steps. But yeah, in the real world, that would take probably a bit longer, except if you know your spacing. It seems that the key went in harder the last time you tried it, instead because of uh, True. Yeah. blurs on it? Yeah, uh, no, it's not, it's not blurs. It's, um, like I said, these, this is a round file. It's round. So uh, the key that you end up with will not have that that zigzag shape, it will be like that. Of course, the, uh, the valleys are flat instead of pointy, and when it goes up, it goes way up. So a pin will have to travel over that whole key, and it don't want to go up the vertical. So if you keep on filing to a 1919 position, then it's quite hard to get those valleys straight. That, so you have to smooth them off which I didn't do because I knew I could probably get it in. But yeah, if you keep on doing that, well, getting it in, if you can't, well, tough luck. If you can't get it out, hmm, <laughs> plausible deniability gone. Something happened to that lock. People will know. And during competition, there'll be no points. Sometimes, yeah. If, if the uh, height difference between a pin that, that are together, so if it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you don't have But if it's a 1, 9, 1, 9, you ha you'll have to, because that, that will not work. You're talking about the sides, on the edges of the key when you fire, you leave. If I knife at you. So if you, if you fire your key like this, yeah. you get a burr over here, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. So you, do, you, do you smooth off the burr? Uh, <coughs> I try to, and I don't file it off and just use a nail and do it like that, yeah. Because if you file it, it'll again look different, because your file touched that. And, yeah. Yes. Uh, the key blank will be softer than your pins, and the standard key is. There are, uh, it's brass, which is, uh, well, softer than, than the other material. Um, there are steel key blanks and they're a bit too impression because well the, the pins they, they touch the, the the key but they won't go in I mean it, it's like yeah it's hard it's harder and uh, you can't file them and if they snap because keys do snap doing this I mean if you're in training you'll ruin an awful lot of keys uh, this is brass so if it's about to snap it'll bend it'll tear off and so so you you're warned uh, the first warning on a uh, on, on a steel key will be snap, so so that's a problem. Um, you can even work with softer stuff like aluminium, but uh, that tends to really take impressions. But well, that's too soft. If you if you put any pressure on it, turning it, oh, actually it's open. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, am I good. Uh, so well, that that then it'll bend almost instantly, and it's a bit too brittle. So then you have a working key. So it'll look funky. See, the, the valleys just are smooth, so, so you can see the actual, uh, uh, well, the actual points in it. So when you're looking for, uh, when you're looking for your marks on the key and the fiddle bit, yeah. will a given lock always leave marks on the same side? How do you know which side of the key to look at? You can look at both sides, it's good anyway. Uh, on, a, on a regular lock, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, normally, uh, it'll be in the middle. But if you look at a keyway, a keyway goes like this. It zigzags. So the middle is not always the middle of your key. Because if the keyway goes like that, your key does. So initially, it may be in the middle. So let, let's say this microphone is my pin. If your key goes like that, if it's on a left turn, then it's on the side. 
So, so it'll look, uh, if your key combination is a bit of a zigzag, if you look on top of it, you'll, you'll, you'll see that it's on the left or the right. No, the key is going through the left or the right. The pins are supposed to be on the middle, if it's a half decent lock. Yeah. So what do you actually need to do this? Well, you saw me using it. You need, well, some crap. Um, a measuring device is handy for training purposes, so you know your, your, your depth. Uh, uh, well, in the field that also helps if you have to do it by chart. Um, you can do it El Cheapo left for, for, for some quid, or there's an expensive one, but I really like this. Um, you need some files. Actually, you need some good files. Um, we use quite a lot of different ones. And well, the, the, the common idea seems to end at a GoBet Swiss Cut number four, which is quite fine. So you get a very smooth surface, but it's not too shiny. Because if you put a magnifier with a light on a mirror, then you can't see anything anymore. So th this is quite a smooth, this gives quite a smooth surface. And well, even on a crappy microscope, you could well basically see what, what, what I was looking for. Um, you need something to grip it in. I mean, uh, and it has to be fairly stable because you're moving about a bit. And uh, a so door. a door will do also, yeah. Uh, but then put if I go through customs with a door, <laughs> <laughs> I got questions already, man. <laughs> That's the difference, uh, TSA can be hard. I mean, I was in America with a shitload of metal in my hand luggage. And uh, uh, yeah. Some funny questions. And of course, well, the left one will do, but you don't want to take that to customs, because, well, then you can't take any, any other luggage uh, weight-wise. These are uh, uh, Manfrotto super clamps, they're actually theater clamps. They're been suggested to you by Johnson uh, from London. And they work the charm. They're not actually, well, they are grips, but not meant for this. They're meant for, uh, uh, for, for cameras, actually. You need blanks, a shitload of blanks. Uh, of course, if you're only going to uh, impression one brand of lock, you only need one brand of key. Yes, please. Do you have to use a black one? What stops you using a bit of brass that you can't adjust to that That'll make your life not easier. I mean, there are universal blanks, that's what they're called, and they're basically skinnier than a normal key, so they'll fit in several curvy keyways. Uh, but then if you wiggle that, there's a bit too much play. So even if your pin is at the correct height, because you can wiggle that much, uh, it could still give you a mark. And, and then you would think <laughs> it's not the correct height. So you're filing it. So the, the best way to go, the best way in the ideal world, is go for the original brass blanks. If they're not there, if they don't exist, of course, you have to improvise. Yes, please. Easy Entry is a machine that, um, if you go to a locks, uh, to, to a key copy shop, it'll take the original key, hopefully, and duplicate your combination. What a Easy Entry does, it's a machine that duplicates the side on both sides, so it will actually make a fitting key from a solid piece of brass. That works. Because th that, yeah, that works. That's that they're, yeah, they're they're fairly good. They're a bit soft, so you have to be careful. Yeah, but it works. Yeah, it works definitely. I think pulling it instead of pulling it left, right, but yanking it out a bit, which well, we didn't discuss here, but there are several ways to get markings on that thing. That would be easier because it will break. Yeah, eventually. Any more? Yeah. Are there any marks left? Yes. You can actually tell how good the guy is. <laughs> you can actually, it, it's a roadmap how good the guy is. Well, it's brilliant. Yeah. Good yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I gave a, a totally virgin lock uh, after I impressioned it once, I gave to Datagram. Oh, cool. And he was like, yeah, that's Jos Weyers written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> ta, ta, ta. Because um, you, yeah, you have the exact steps. Yeah. And open. Yeah. 
spacings so you can spot Yoss's locks like yeah and you could see how, 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 how often he wiggled the amount of force I mean you could probably tell in which year I did it because you, my, my technique changed <laughs> I didn't see those up no but uh, No, 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 no. Because if it's on a used lock, a used lock will get abused over years. Not in this way. Because. Wrong keys inserted. Still. Because uh, it's. Uh, still, no, that will not happen. It, it, it will be different. It won't happen that much. I mean, it, it will, won't get full time wrong keys. I mean, then you have another problem. Have you seen our hacker space? Yeah. We need to take that one apart. Uh, we well, that's. I have news for you, that has been impression, so... Yeah. <laughs> so that, uh, Only on one side. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that, but I know that, yeah. It has been impressioned. I know, you have the best key. Yeah, which is funny, because uh, it, it's, it's a really crap lock on the, on the hackerspace. Because, well, it's on a military base. With NATO Redo. With NATO Redo, uh, uh, and we, we blurred on Google, which is cool which is stupid but cool and well this is a crap lock and everybody was complaining how crap that lock is so of course me doing stuff with locks they go like oi fix it so I was like I don't think it's that crap so I impressioned a, a key for it and of course that key fits perfectly because it was cut to that lock all the other ones are crap but so mine works like a charm including the factory key yeah including the factory key that's the worst keys those are the worst yeah brilliant mine works so what more do you need except for keys? You need some type of magnification and some light will help also. Uh, a lot of stuff gets sold. Uh, this is actually a cool one. Um, How easy is it to buy blanks as just a guy off the street? Um, to buy them cheaply, that could be a problem. Then you have to buy them in bulk. But if you want a couple, just go to your local copy shop instead of one one. He'll probably change you the same rate as a cut key, so you don't want that. Because uh, especially if you start practicing, you need a shitload of keys. So if he says, "Well, it's eight quid a piece," that's going to be a problem. But yeah, if you know people, and apparently now you know people, <laughs> that uh, that's going to help. Yeah. We put them in the lock key village blanks files. Okay, cool. So you can give a go. Yes, please. Um. The files are quite sharp and pointy, so I put those, uh, I check that luggage, the rest, no. I mean, you don't get any special questions or anything, you don't get Question me all the time, but that's totally different talk. So, you know, <laughs> ID to, to prove that you, you do this kind of... Uh, I have files on me. <laughs> I have a file. When you're the world champion, Google is... Yeah, yeah, but my, my reaction, if, if they do question my, my equipment, is like, oi, Google me. <laughs> they go like, ah, uh, okay. But, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I think Jort Knaap, who does safes, uh, he's, he's, he's a Dutch guy, he has way more kit. And that kit looks way more interesting because it's all custom made and, and he gets stopped all the time. He's been missing planes all the time because customs kept hanging him. Uh, it's scary stuff. So he needs some magnification and some lights. Um, mine is a cheapo cheapo thingy and that works like a charm. They are actually uh, complete kits uh, with lenses and, and uh, UV switches, lights. That one is actually crap, but the idea is brilliant. Uh, it is, it is crap. It's very not cheap. It comes in a very nice box, it looks shiny, and it's crap. Because um, uh, what they did, they put some rubber uh, lining uh, where, where the key should go in. Yeah, a cut key like that, sharp edges through rubber. That's gonna that's gonna wear and will leave black spots everywhere and you'll confuse them with marks. So that's gonna be a problem. So don't want that. Oh yeah, yeah. We had it at the Dutch Open at a, uh, and yeah. Well, it fell basically <laughs> apart after two hours. Uh, can do you worse. Uh, grip. Uh, any normal vice grip will do, but I like to keep it straight. So. These are professional, uh, uh, j just custom handles that you can buy in the shop. They're quite cheap, but they work. Uh, this used to be my handle, and but this one is a fucking expensive one. This is what eighty quid. Um, more than that, about okay. Okay. 
Um, I got this for free because, well, I'm like me. And um, when I took it out of the package, used it the first time, it failed. It, it just does not work. Totally over-engineered. You, you don't need expensive stuff on this one. You do probably need some money on files because good files are expensive. But they're, if they're that good, and the good bets are, that's probably the last file you ever buy. So then it doesn't matter. You had some addresses that they were, yeah. what, 20 quid, something like that. Okay, so it's brilliant. I mean, I, I paid top dollar for mine. Um, and some, some, some aids is also handy. What I did, I took a core that I filed off, because what you can have then, if you put the key in, you'll see where the marks are supposed to be. Because if you look at the top of, 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 of this of, uh, filed off core, you'll see the round bits where the pins should use up and down, and the marks should be dead smack in the center of that so it's easy. I mean, uh, and, and well, sometimes you're not sure if, if it's on the right position, and you know it's, it's sure. And that tool I demonstrated before, that's uh, been made by Jort Knaap, which is brilliant, and now all the lockpickers want it. And it's shiny. Um, you don't have to bring much, because these are very tiny lights. Uh, I have that somewhere. It can be as tiny as this. There's a tiny microscope, tiny light, very good. So, for the field, I mean, you can carry this tiny file and you're off. So, yeah, you won't get questions, not, not that much. Um, and these are, well, Deal Extreme, two quid, something like that. Or, yeah, 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 they work like a charm. You can buy them at specialized shop for 20 something, but uh, two quid will do. Yeah. Sorry? Optimum. Whatever floats your boat. Uh, I think if you magnify too much, and this is almost too much, this is, I don't know what it is, but it's 45 times, you'll see everything. Everything. Also, every mark. So you go, yeah, I see your mark. And you take it off. Where was it? So you have to actually count, now I'm looking at position one, nothing, two, nothing, three, there's something, all right, three and something. Because if you do it like that, yeah, I see something, no idea where it was. So a bit less would do. I think 20 would be a good number, yeah. But that's my uh, preference. And it also depends on your eyesight. I mean, if I do it like that, I see quite a lot. But, um, that's basically it. Any more questions? Time wise, okay-ish. No, we're all settled. Okay, well, people help me building this to uh, help someone. No, nope, nothing. And there can be more information found. I don't know if these slides are up on the internet lately, but uh, there is stuff to be found. Uh, Deviant Olam, the one who make the, the well, make the, the moving pictures, uh, he has a book coming out, which is uh, Keys to the Kingdom. I read uh, his first chapter, because the book is not out yet, but that one is uh, about impressioning. It's quite good, so I've seen it. Yes? If I'm scared after this talk, what kind of watch should I buy? Different ones than your neighbors. <laughs> 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 That's clear. Thank you.